My name is Mark Verbos. I'm uh, I'm from Verbos Electronics. Um, I'm from the United States. I live here in Berlin, and uh, the new product that that we're showing uh, now is right here. It's called the Multi Delay Processor. Um, the thing I wanted to talk about, um, I think it could be quite boring to present it like a product demo exactly. You can come to the table and talk to um, me or any of the guys about it if if you want. But um, the thing that I wanted to talk about is about how um, how this this product came to be and about how um, the evolution of, of creating um, something can be specifically for me and in this case, but maybe it's relevant to to um, anybody designing synthesizer modules. So um, the history, uh, well, first about me, I have been involved with um, with synthesizers for 25 years. And um, along the way, I became an expert in boucle instruments. And so I was doing a lot of repairs of vintage boucle instruments and became really obsessed with the, the boucle design process. And there was a, a module that he designed in the in 1976 that was an eight tap digital delay that used uh, sigma delta conversion, and he made I thought it was two, but I found out the other day it was actually three of them, and um, ultimately never went into production with it. So it sort of died on the vine, and in 2001, I got the, the schematics, the documentation from that module, and um, it it was kind of interesting that it was more or less impossible to build because he um, I have some of the documents printed here. He um, he used this uh, military shift register that was. Um, a metal can and was very expensive and at the time that I was looking at the schematic for the first time I, I did a little research about what it would take to get that part and found that it was about eighty dollars to buy one and there are forty of them in here so <laughs> so clearly that wasn't uh, something that was practical and I had my suspicion that the reason he gave up on the design was because the part became unrealistic to source and so I started playing with ideas about how this could be evolved or how it could be adapted to actually become something that could be made. And um, after a few years of struggling, I, I, I came up with a concept of how to replace all of those serial shift registers with dynamic RAM and address that RAM. And uh, I was able to make um, essentially a clone of, of that module, but adapted so that it could be manufactured. Obviously, it wasn't a, um, an easy thing to build, and it wasn't really practical anyway. Um, I made 25 or 30 of them. But um, the problem with it was that although it had really cool functions, it's eight delays that are in series, and they can be modulated and have outputs, the, conver the analog to digital converter was terrible. And um, along the way, as I started obsessing over this, I was going through the, it's what they call a, a sigma delta or delta converter, where it turns the analog signal into a one-bit digital stream. And what I found is that although the delta converter was first um, patented in 19, well, applied for a patent in 1963, the version that Don Buchla shamelessly stole was patented in 1976, the same year he made the module. The um, thing is that this, this version that was patented by RCA, um, actually, that's the wrong one, uh, this one here. Um, this version that was patented by RCA, it's identical, the, the, the converter technology is identical part for part to what Don used. And in their text, they say that it was 
good between 50 hertz and 15 kilohertz for clock frequencies, or, or for uh, frequencies coming through it, um, clock frequencies from 50 kilohertz to 800 kilohertz, and that it could get roughly 60 dB of signal to noise ratio, which if you know anything about pro audio equipment is absolutely horrible. It's, uh, it's like a BBD, or maybe even worse than a BBD. And when you put eight of them in parallel, it's absolutely tr unusable. So <laughs> um, in this rabbit hole of, uh, of patents, I started to go down. I learned about um, how, how to make one-bit delta converters in different ways. And I discovered that there's this, there was a company called Delta Lab that did a product that was shockingly similar to this in 1978. It was called the Acoustic Computer. And in that case, they used only six outputs, and they made a kind of quasi-reverb using these six, six uh, delays that were in not equally spaced, but um, broken up into asymmetrical spacing. And in the patent that they filed for their, uh, their converter technology, they already um, claimed a 90 dB signal to noise ratio in 1979. And then I started to read all of this guy um, who was the founder of, of Delta Lab, his, his, all of his filings, which were six different converters that got better and better and better, Richard de Fiertis, his last filing um, was in 1984 and was finalized in 1986. And this one does pretty much the same thing that, that, that RCAs did, but it actually claimed a 100 dB signal to noise ratio. So I thought, what if I tried that? So I started working with adapting this idea. I mean, I knew that I wanted something that was kind of like this, but um, what was actually important to me about it was to be, that was the eight taps and the ability to, to, um, to mix them together in different ways, and have the outputs and have some, some, blend, uh, some preset mixes, some blending, and most importantly, to be able to voltage control it and Another problem with the, the Buchla implementation was that it was a pretty narrow range that the clock would go. Um, his clock would go from, um, from about f uh, uh, 16 to 1 ratio, roughly. So um, from around uh, 50K to around 800K. And with uh, 5,000 stages in, in each tap, it was... It was making really short delays, and it didn't have a wide range. So um, I started working on with a different clock design, and I was able to come up with something that could do a, a little bit wider ratio, 20 to 1, and um, decided to try using a different memory th system than I'd used before. So I, I, I used a FIFO, which is first in, first out. It's a, also a serial memory that's sort of similar to what Don used originally, but in one chip where I can get all of the, the eight taps out of one chip. And I went with one that instead of having 5,000 stages had 32,000 stages <laughs> and clocked it much faster. So instead of going from 50K to 800K, I'm going from um, 200K to three and a half megahertz. So, um, so the result was that I, what I found is that actually this 100 dB signal to noise ratio wasn't entirely unrealistic. And of course, when you add eight of them together, you, you add to the noise, but was able to get something that actually uh, isn't offensively noisy, um, it is able to operate in a, in a modern circumstance and, and be quiet enough. But that isn't really enough for me. So then in the last, I, I started to, to prototype it, and then I, I experimented a little bit with um, with running other effects into the feedback loop around the module. So um, I had this Walrus Audio descent pedal, which could do um, reverb and it could do pitch shifting to make shimmer reverbs. And I found that I could get some really interesting ambient textures by using that in the feedback loop. There's a, a pro audio reverb effect um, from the 70s called the Ursa Major Space Station. And I have one of those in my studio, and I was always in love with the crazy dub reverb effects that come from it. And it's 
eight fixed delays with uh, a reverb control, which is actually a bunch more delays that are only in the feedback path. So I decided to make something like that, take the, the eighth tap output, run it through m a bunch more delays, and bring it up just as a feedback part. And so I'm able to get something kind of reminiscent of that reverb algorithm from this. And then while I was at it, I put a, an octave up pitch shift in there. So um, what, I, what I think is, uh, is relevant about this is that not only can, I, can this actually do these effects that, that the Buchla thing could do, but it has a different palette entirely, and it's quiet enough that it can actually work in a, in a modern environment. So I'll, I'll play a few examples of what this can do, and, um, and I hope you like it.
Thank you.